thank you for the subs who have stepped in at the last minute to come in the morning and pray. Amen. So go back. No, you stay, stay with this, right? Because you are going to make Singers. Um, Laura, you're more than welcome to sing with us. Mask, unmask, Ellen, and Sarah. Ella, be sure you ride a big flat.
Um, as we begin to move toward the summer and we begin to enjoy some more special music provided by lots of different folks in the congregation, um, I thought it would be good for us to remember and to relearn perhaps um, what the prelude is for and how it leads us into worship. Uh, the prelude is a wonderful time of contemplation and, and quiet prayer. Uh, it is an invitation for us to gather from literally the busyness of the world and enter into God's um, very house where we are in the presence of the Lord, ready to receive the word of God and all that we are promised in the risen life of Christ. All that to say, um, we are glad when you are able to be here, and as soon as whatever sort of prelude music is offered, we invite you then to use that music in a prayerful fashion uh, to gather together for worship. I'll also add this little incentive. When we go online in the mornings, um, one of the things we do is to hear our wonderful musicians. We turn on the microphones in the building, and they're right above your heads. And so when someone is playing a piano or an organ prelude, the microphones are on. And if you're underneath talking or, or telling stories about your golf score or the lady down the street who is mowing the lawn in her bikini top, Everyone online gets to hear you tell those stories because the microphones, again, are on. See, I just use those as examples because I knew you wouldn't say that in church. But it's a good reminder that for our online folks who are not able to join us, they use that prelude time as well to gather for worship, to find their peace, and to then enter into worship with you even if they're not here. All that to say, we have a wonderful opportunity to practice a prayerful prelude with the wonderful music of our joyful noise ringers.
Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Morning Star Lutheran Church. We're so glad that you could be here in person in the worship center or online. You are welcome. Please make sure that you fill out the small information card that is in your bulletin today. We ask that you do that. If you are a member, a guest, a friend, or family of, uh, we're glad that you could do that. Please put that small card in the offering baskets when they come around a little bit later in the service. It lets us know that you've been with us in worship, but it's also a wonderful opportunity to pass along your joys, your concerns as part of our growing church family. We do wish you a happy Mother's Day. We pray that uh, the bonds of family are uh, brought closer together by love and affection. We also gather together in prayer today for those who have sought to be mothers, who have struggled with that, for those who have had difficult relationship as a mother or with their mothers. Um, this is part of our walk of faith. We walk together and accompany one another through all that life brings. Um, please make sure that you hold each other in prayer. We have a lot of folks traveling uh, for graduations, uh, for wonderful family celebrations. As summer begins to draw closer, we, uh, we continue to pray that everyone will be safe on the roads as we go uh, from one celebration perhaps to another. Let's begin our worship this morning using our confession and forgiveness. I'll invite you to rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another, either sitting or kneeling as you are able. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Congregation, you could please stand for our gathering song.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our risen Savior, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good that we may do your will and work in us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation, please be seated for our morning's readings. The first reading is from Acts. Dorcas was a faithful and devoted woman. Uh, of charity in the community of Joppa. Her kindness and her work with clothing was well known, especially to the widows in town. 
When she fell ill and died, Peter raised her back to life through the power of prayer. The first reading from Acts chapter 9, beginning with the 36th verse. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who had heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood around beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. And sh she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed, them, uh, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel, Jesus responds in questions about his identity. Excuse me. The second reading. Christ is the shepherd who leads his faithful to the springs of the water of life. Christ is also the lamb who vanquished sin and suffering. The second reading in Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no tribes could count, and from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and honor, blessing and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more, and the sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And those fifth grade and under, come on up and spend some time with Pastor John. Good morning, everybody. Come on up, have a seat. I want to start off by asking you, um, I bet some of you are pretty good at riddles. There's a very old, old riddle. You might know it, maybe you do, but here's, here's a riddle that I learned when I was probably your age. What first 
walks on four legs, then walks on two legs, then finally walks on three legs. I know, head scratcher, huh? Let me, uh, let me see. Hey, come on up. Have a seat. Hey, hey Felicity. Um, let me see if I can, I, I'm, ooh, I'll use, I'll use a, I'll give, I'll give you verbal clues. What starts life on four legs and then continues life on two legs and then finishes life, this is very small, on three legs. Anybody know? This didn't help, did it? It starts out as a baby, and then you do what? You start off as a baby, and then you go on two feet, and you become a, a child or an adult, right? And then when you get a little bit older, you might have a cane to walk with. So two feet and a cane makes three. You're a person. You're right. Very old riddle. Not a very good cane. But riddles are kind of designed to, to, they're kind of designed to mess you up a little bit. They're kind of designed to, to confuse you. Or, or to make you think the wrong direction. And then finally when you figure it out, you say, oh, okay. Now see, a lot of people, back when Jesus was teaching and preaching in the countryside, in the towns, a lot of people thought he was kind of telling riddles. People wondered if he was trying to be sneaky or to be secretive about who he was. Because he would tell them stories about the kingdom of heaven. He would tell them stories and he would tell them parables about God's love. And they, they wondered, are, are you trying to tell us that maybe you're somebody really important? Are you trying to tell us that you're the Messiah? Is this like a riddle that we have to figure it out? And Jesus says, no, I, I'm not telling you a riddle. I'm telling you the 100% truth. I've never made a secret about who I am. I am God's son, and I am here to bring you the good news that the kingdom of God is close by. I'm here to tell you that the people who have been, uh, you know, held in captivity are going to be set free. The people who are blind in their eyes or in their hearts will be able to see again. The people who are scared and frightened will have hope. All these things are not a riddle. It's the truth, Jesus says, and even the truth that one day I will have to die, but God will raise me up to live forever. All these things Jesus told us, none of them were a riddle. None of them were to try to fake people out. He wanted us to know and to hear and to trust him. That's why when we share the good news about what we learn here at church, we don't want to tell people riddles. We say, I know that God loves me very much. I know that Jesus died and rose again, and that's why we celebrate Easter with all the music and the, the wonderful bells and all the, the decorations, and this gives me hope and lets me live like a disciple. That's what we're called to do, not to tell riddles, but to be faithful, and you are all excellent at that. Let's say a quick prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending us Jesus who never tries to trick us but always tries to love us and always shows us how we can follow him. Help us to do what we can to pray, to serve, to share, to love all of your children. Amen. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming up. Good to see you guys. As we continue through our Sundays in Easter, today is a bit of a change in our scripture, because for the past few weeks following the resurrection, we've had scripture involving the resurrected Jesus. John's gospel has given us these readings in the first three Sundays of Easter where Jesus had appeared to the disciples in order to show with sign after sign that he had indeed defeated death. We heard about the witnesses the first day at the tomb the risen Jesus appearing to the disciples in the, in the locked room and Thomas doubting. 
And then last week we talked about Jesus appearing to the disciples while they were out fishing. All of this witnesses to this risen Christ. We take a bit of a turn this week as we don't hear about an eyewitness resurrection story, but rather we go back into Jesus' ministry. Now this is prior to his arrest. Jesus is still traveling, preaching, teaching, performing signs. And he's continuing to face much of the same thing. In spite of his words and actions, there are people who just do not believe him. There have been different responses to his teaching and divisions among people because of it. But many continue to find reasons still not to believe him. And as much as he gives them this evidence, he continues to encounter this unbelief. The way this reading starts out, these people that who, who had trouble believing Jesus. No, really, tell us. I mean, are you really the Messiah? I mean, really, this time, this time, we're serious. Please tell us if you are or not. And Jesus' response, I've already told you, but you do not believe. I do these works in my Father's name. You do not believe. Through the gospel, we hear all of his work. He heals a blind man. And there's those who don't even believe that the man was blind in the first place. He seeks to free the woman caught in adultery and they try to trap him into not following the law. Some are saying maybe this is the prophet. No, the Messiah wouldn't come from Galilee. He heals someone. They blame him for healing on the Sabbath. He has a demon and he's out of his mind. No, these are not the words of a demon. He's a blasphemer. No, he's the Messiah. Imprison him, free him. Which is it? There was this constant division. I mean, did you ever ask this question, and, and really it's a rhetorical question because your mind's already made up, regardless of what the answer is. You, th this was them. By this time in his ministry, it seemed like there was nothing he was going to do to change their minds. I'm going to pick on my son, Cash, for a minute, because they're not here yet this morning. <laughs> I don't know if I could do this at the 11 o'clock. But this reminded me, and maybe you all could relate to this, but when Cash was small, he was once small. <laughs> I think he's probably about two years old. But we were trying to tell him his name, right? We're trying to teach him his name. And we would say, your name is Cash. No, I'm the son. No, your name is Cash. My name is the son. I'm the son. What's your name? I'm the son. I had this overwhelming evidence for him that his name was indeed cash to pinka <laughs> but but he wasn't going to believe it no matter what and it reminds me because much like cash who didn't want to believe his name was cash jesus's ministry was always challenged by these unbelievers these works they are in my they are my credentials he says but you don't believe people struggled with a faith and their belief in Jesus and why he had come among us. And all of this kind of got me thinking about Easter just a few weeks ago. You know, even though we celebrated with, with great joy and, and happiness the resurrection, which was, which was only a couple weeks ago, for so many it seems so far removed. I mean, Easter... Right, it's traditionally this time of excitement and joy and beauty and being around family. And we dress up and we take pictures and there's flowers everywhere and, and the church is decorated in white. But for so many, it, that day seems like so long ago. Or, or worse, maybe it feels like it didn't even happen at all. Do you feel like you missed the joy and the celebration of this resurrection? Where were you in your faith? during this time in Easter. 
Like our scripture, many times we find ourselves stuck in our own dark winter. Maybe like these, these doubters in our reading this week, we still continue with that rhetorical question. We have to ask, if you're the Messiah, tell me plainly. Show me, because right now, right now I really need to know. Maybe you are struggling today. Maybe you have found it hard to live into that celebration of that Easter moment. Maybe you're struggling with with some sudden news that you were not expecting. Maybe we're focused on, on a deadline or a priority in our life. Maybe we're challenged with fear and anxiety or worry. Maybe our faith is just coming up short. Easter is this, this joy and the celebration, but what happens when, when we're stuck, when we're locked in our rooms, when we're in that winter, when we're looking for those nail marks and that open side and we're reaching out and it's just not there, when we fall into this doubt? If we are like the people in John's writing today and we're still asking, are you the Messiah or not? Because I'm just not feeling it some reason, for whatever reason, I just can't get there. Church, know this. That resurrection is for you, no matter where you are in life. Easter has happened, whether we felt it or not. It happens for us today and every day. That resurrection is about eternal hope. Even though our scripture this week is not about eyewitness resurrection moments. This week is important because Jesus reminds us of our relationship even when he has not seen or felt. Today he tells us we belong to his flock. We are the sheep that have been claimed in our baptism. We are the sheep who are protected by the shepherd. By this resurrection we have eternal life and will never perish. Never perish in our sadness. Never perish in our pain and our doubt. Never perish in our worry. Never perish even in, even in death. God has come down to us through Jesus Christ the shepherd and makes it clear. He will allow no one or nothing to snatch us from his hand. That is the resurrection promise. That is the Easter moment. That is the promise that makes us Easter people. Not just on Easter Sunday, but every day. Because Easter's not just a day, it gives us a new way of life. This resurrection is the reason that you can give yourself permission to live into that doubt, that pain sometimes, whatever's burdening you, whatever's worrying you, whatever might be making you doubt. These are all real life experiences that we are allowed to own. In scripture today, Jesus continues to face non-believers. Today, we we preach these same words and we struggle with the same challenges of faith. There is is no hard evidence to provide. There's no absolute to, to present. But what we can deliver, what any of us, what all of us can deliver to one another in community is the reminder of that promise from God made real in the resurrection of that Easter Sunday. That promise that we continue to receive in the waters of baptism, the promise in the bread and the wine, the promise that we receive in these scriptures. You are allowed to lean into that doubt and that challenge of faith because there is something much greater. Something greater given to us in that Easter promise that we belong to this shepherd. This reading in Revelation that we heard today gives us a glimpse of this new life in Christ. John's John's vision of these once oppressed people who are now rejoicing. They're praising God because of the peace and salvation they have realized in Christ. I just want to lift that up for a moment because I think it, it really tells it. John writes in Revelation, the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more. They will thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor the scorching heat. The lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. 
and wipe away every tear from their eye. So if today you find yourself struggling to live in that glory and beauty of Easter Sunday, remember, God chose you. Whether or not some days you have trouble choosing God, God chose you in this resurrection. Amen. Congregation, you could stand for our song of the day. the church of every time and place, we now confess and proclaim what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 105 in your red hymnal, and it's also on the screens. Together, let us pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. General Shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place 
for those environments that are dangerous or unhealthy. Especially we pray that you would keep those safe who are making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Seek out those who weep while they await healing or consolation. We pray today for all those that are listed in our prayer list, all those in our bulletin, those that we carry in our hearts this day. We pray that, O oh God, you would set all people in their path who can provide the care they need. We pray that you would wipe away every tear from their eyes. We pray that they would, you would give each of your children hope for the coming days. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages. We thank you for the saints that surround us this day. We thank you for hands that helped make birdhouses yesterday. We thank you for those who have shared meals. We thank you for hands that have made phone calls and held someone else's hands in prayer. Wash us in the saving grace that you provide us each day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these and all our prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. You're invited to exchange the peace with those nearest to you. Thank you for reaching out to one another. We look forward to spending some time together in fellowship after service is done. Um, We look forward to spending time uh, in discipleship with you this week. Thank you in advance um, for filling up our offering baskets. uh, And thank you for the way that you have given of yourselves this week. Uh, Like I mentioned shortly in our prayers, we had a good group of folks yesterday uh, morning making birdhouses together. It was a a cross-generational event. Um, lots of lots of very brave helpers from Morningstar holding nails for very little hands who are practicing nailing uh, boards together. Uh, that takes a little courage but a lot of love to give that time. Uh, thank you for those of you who have been preparing meals and, and for those who are, uh, we had um, meals were provided to the local schools this week by this congregation uh, and by some community partners. Um, we're going to be saying thank you to those of you who have been helping with Roof Above and Room in the Inn Ministries. Uh, we're having a, a, a dinner uh, this coming weekend to say thank you for all those of you who have been helping with those ministries. Lots of ways that you've been making a difference, and we thank you for them all. Let's receive our morning offerings now.
living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it's our privilege and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for the creating of the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out upon all nations and people. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body, it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's been shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
in our new member class, which is going on during the faith formation hour the, on Sundays now, uh, one of the things we've been talking about are the sacraments. And literally, um, we, we teach that, well, I teach, that the sacraments are, are what happens when the people of God come together and, and we're all in line um, to be getting what we deserve, which is not good things because of who we are. And a sacrament is that sacred moment when God takes that line and changes it from being a line of guilty folks to becoming a line of beloved and saved folks. Uh, this is what sacraments do. We come here, ah, there's not a lot of water. Um, can I ask, can you go get some water for the baptismal font? It should, there should be a pitcher in the sacristy. Look at us, sacristine on the run here at Morning Star Lutheran Church. I was going to invite you to remember your baptism, but <laughs> momentarily you'll remember your baptism. Um, and, and that's when the line changes. We, God takes us as created creatures of this world, and all of a sudden we are now beloved children of God. So when we make the sign of the cross and we remember our baptism, we remember that this line is not hopeless people, not guilty people, um, but rather we are beloved children of God. And then we come a little bit further in this line, and we come to God with empty hands, and we got nothing to, to pay for this, nothing to, to show that we deserve this gift, and yet every time you come to this meal, you are given the very body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and the salvation of your souls. Um, this, this line changes from folks who deserve what they're going to get to receiving what God wants them to have. Uh, and that's why this moment, these sacraments are so sacred. Um, here at Morningstar, our, open, our fellowship for communion is an open table fellowship. That means if you believe that Christ is present in this meal for the forgiveness of your sins, you are welcome at this table. If you are receiving communion this morning, thank you for that, Liz. Go ahead. Um, if you are receiving communion this morning, simply have your hands held high. Again, empty. There's nothing you can give uh, that is worth this gift of bread and wine. You'll receive the wafer. You'll go on a little bit further to the side, dip that wafer into the wine, eat them together, and then you can go back to your row on the side aisles. Then have a moment of prayer. You'll see a lot of people gathering for a minute of prayer or reflection on this great gift that we do receive in communion. And then you're welcome to join in the singing of our hymns. If you prefer a blessing today, and that's fine too, have your hands folded like you're saying a prayer, and you'll receive a blessing when you arrive. But come let us eat and drink. The feast is spread.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are very glad to have you in worship this morning, and we look forward to joining you in a morning and in a week of discipleship. I believe that we have, um, I'm going to check with Nellie, do we have a children's program in the gym today? Okay. There's a special uh, children's faith formation hour in the gymnasium, FLC Gym, all the way down the halls and on the right-hand side. Uh, you're going to be working on some Mother's Day uh, activities, so any uh, kids and young folks, join us there. Uh, junior and senior high will be in the youth room as normal. Adults have a couple different things going on. We've got a uh, caring conversation class uh, because of some preparations for new carpeting this week, the fellowship hall has been emptied out of all chairs and tables. Um, and, and some of us didn't want to meet on the floor, so we're going to actually have caring conversations uh, and Deacon Wendy's class will be meeting in the parents' room right next to the nursery in the Family Life Center. So just go through the admin hall, through the fire doors, second uh, room on the left-hand side. Uh, they'll see you there. New member class and inquirer's class is going to be in the admin hall on the right-hand side. Same place as last few weeks. If you haven't been with us before, join us today and start uh, that journey with us. Uh, also, please remember, Music Mania for all our elementary age children continues to be offered on Wednesday nights. Uh, you are going to be helping us lead worship on Pentecost Sunday, first Sunday in June at our 10 a.m. service. One uh, really neat activity this week, and you are all invited, the Gallery at Morningstar, a brand new art gallery, is going to be having its grand opening on Friday night uh, between 6 and 8.30. You're welcome to come, drop in, and hear, uh, take a good look at all the art that's been brought together. Our first exhibit is called Passing the Peace. We have some local artists, uh, local professional artists who have submitted pieces, we have Morningstar members who have submitted pieces. Uh, we actually have some, uh, some folks from international uh, places who have uh, submitted artwork, and we are excited about that. So drop in on Friday, anytime between 6 and 8.30. Uh, there's going to be music played. They're going to have hors d'oeuvres. Terribly fancy. So if you'd like to dress up a little bit, it does qualify as a date. So there you go. So see you on Friday uh, evening for our gallery opening. Let's sing our final hymn, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. We'll sing it through three times.
God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.